Hi, and welcome back. And of course, a Merry Christmas to all of you. I recently released an album of music that was all written for my tutorials, either on this channel or others. So obviously I'm going to have to plug that first. Check the card for a YouTube playlist, or the description for a Bandcamp link, or search any of the usual outlets for Imposter Syndrome by Dan Worrell. Anyway, when I announced it, I got several requests for a Bandcamp release so that my listeners could download FLAC versions, and this elicited the following response. FLAC sounds like dog turd. Now, of course, FLAC is an acronym, and the L stands for lossless, which means that once decompressed, the data should be exactly the same as the original WAV file, with no loss of any information at all. That makes it quite easy to test. We don't need to do any listening. We can simply null the FLAC files against the original WAVs, and if there's anything left at all, it's failed the test. So here's a Reaper project with my album imported onto track one. These are the 16-bit 44.1 kHz files that I released. Track two is the same, but I've converted all the original WAVs into 16-bit FLAC files using Reaper's batch converter. As expected, if I invert the polarity for track two and play it together with track one, we just hear silence. Let's take it a step further and add track three as well. These are FLAC files again, this time created with SoundForge. Does this sound like dog poo? On second thoughts, don't answer that. All we need to know is if it's any way different to the original. So I'll invert the polarity for track four, which is another batch of flax created with Acoustica from Acon Digital, and add that as well. And we're back to silence again. Is it really silence though? It drops off the bottom of the master meters, but there's more dynamic range below that that we can't see, and any difference at all, no matter how small, will count as a fail. I could pull up some more powerful metering, but a better and faster option would be to render out the whole album as a single stereo file at 32-bit float resolution, and then we can analyse the result offline to see if there's any content at all anywhere. The advantage of running a double null test like this is, if it does cancel perfectly, then we've not only proved that FLAC is indeed lossless, but also that all three applications I tested have implemented it correctly with no bugs. The disadvantage is that, if there are any differences, we won't know where they've come from, and further tests will be needed to determine whether all the FLAC files are different to the original, or just those from a specific application. Honestly, I'm not expecting that to happen, though. OK, Reaper has finished rendering, and we don't even need to load the resulting file up, as we have statistics telling us the maximum peak level was minus infinity. Just in case, though, let's load it into Acoustica and try an offline analysis. Yeah, there's literally nothing there. FLAC is indeed lossless. So, if the numbers are the same once decoded, it sounds the same as the original WAV, right? There's nothing else in a digital audio file, apart from the numbers. No room for any argument there, right? You'd think so, but apparently there is. Because of course my viewers are mostly not stupid, and all this was pointed out to the commenter in the subsequent thread. And it turns out this person doesn't deny that FLAC files are lossless and decode to the same values as the original WAV, and yet still maintains they sound bad. There's no point reasoning with people like this. My demonstration will count for nothing, because people like this have abandoned reason and logic entirely and embraced voodoo magical thinking instead. It is ironic that they so often use the products of science and technology to spread their batshit theories and evidence-free assertions. You might think this is pretty harmless, of course. If this person chooses to believe in some magical dog-turd substrate that permeates FLAC files specifically, while evading detection by all computer scientists, programmers and chip designers, that's just on them. No one else suffers as a consequence. But unfortunately, this kind of thinking seems to be fashionable at the moment in all sorts of ways that definitely are harmful and destructive. Because sure enough, when I click through to this commenter's channel, I find a cesspit of insane conspiracy theories, anti-vax propaganda, the big lie, and thinly veiled support for white supremacy. It's reason and logic, science and technology, 
that distinguish us from other animals and make us human. That's what allows me to create this content and you to view it on a device that would have seemed too fanciful for science fiction when I was a child. Reason, logic, science and technology allow us to live like a gods by comparison with the human beings of just a couple of generations past. To reject all that and embrace trembling, terrified, primitive superstition instead is to betray all that which makes us human. And specifically, I want to say to this poster, wear a mask, you idiot, and get yourself vaccinated. I don't care about you. I'm thinking of all the vulnerable people who perhaps might have genuine medical reasons why they can't be vaccinated or could be immunocompromised for other reasons. Your selfish refusal to get vaccinated puts them at greater risk, and that is not okay. That's all. Thanks for watching, and have a happy new year.